Greetings YouTubers! Today I wanted to show you this old oscilloscope that I picked up on Yahoo auction in Japan where I live for uh, 2000 yen which is uh, about uh, 20 bucks plus shipping. Uh, I bought it knowing that it's not working properly and uh, today I thought we'll try and repair it. So let me first show you what's wrong with it. Well, as you can see here, it's a check some error, recalibrate instrument. Um, if we go into the utilities menu and do a, a self test menu and test all. You'll see here part of the problem and the seller informed me of this before I bought it. So no surprises there. As you can see, protected non-volatile RAM failed, DA converter failed, AD converter failed. Now, this is a pretty typical problem with these. Um, inside there's a RAM module, which has a battery inside. And that battery runs out after 10, 15, 20 years, something like that. And uh, really you have no choice but to replace it replace the whole RAM module and uh, that's exactly what we're gonna do today and uh, hopefully this will solve the problem this is the the Dallas DS 1230Y-120 plus non-volatile RAM uh, made by Maxim integrated in America my plan is to instead of just uh, removing the old chip and putting this one in to this time mount uh, mount it on one of these a socket so that in the future in 10 15 20 years when this with the battery inside this one runs out uh, someone will have an easier time replacing it no soldering required now you can buy these online on uh on eBay for example if you do a search for this model number a bunch of them will come up that uh, cost around uh, um, Six dollars each something like five six dollars each now these are Most likely non not genuine items, and I don't recommend uh, buying them Probably uh, they could be used or or the bat the battery inside could be inferior and they won't last Maybe they'll just last year or so I recommend buying a genuine article from the manufacturer in America. You can buy them, um, you can go to uh, uh, Maxim Integrated's website and order them there. Or maybe from DigiKey or, or Mouser, something like that. Uh, which is what I did with this one. For this job you'll need a T10 Torx. There are eight screws to remove. Do not remove this, this this and this because they're slightly elevated there actually to mount uh, uh, a pouch where you're supposed to keep the service manual inside so let's take this one this one this one this one this one and two on each side I don't have to tell you to unplug it before you do this. There you have it. Nice old CRT. And it's pretty easy to spot the chip. It's right under here. Right down there. If I go in here with my iPhone camera, you'll see this chip down there. You see the date code 89. So yeah, no wonder the battery is depleted. You'll also see that um, the model number is different from my replacement. Uh, this is DS1235YW-120, which I'm replacing with um, 
with the before mentioned DS1230Y-120 plus. And in order to get to this, we're gonna have to take some things apart. That's the annoying part. Luckily, HP has done a good job uh, designing this thing, so it should be pretty straightforward. Let's do it one step at a time. First thing we have to do is to remove the power supply. HP has done a good job here. They put little pins here and here that you have to pull out and then it should slide out from the side. You also have to remove the connector to the motherboard down here. You can just pull it straight up. And now the power supply should just pull out. Now the motherboard is supposed to be able to slide out uh, through the back here. But in order to do that, we're gonna have to remove screws from the back, remove the back plate. We also have to remove the nuts around the BNC connectors on the front. Let's have some more fun with Torx. Let's start with this one. Don't mix these screws up with the ones you took from the lid. They are different. Alright, now this is not a screw. This is, uh, I think it's a ground plug or something, so don't try and drill that one out. Now we'll remove all screws, so it should be a matter of just pulling this thing out. But be careful because it's still connected through some... ...ribbon cable and also two cables going to these, and this is gonna have to be unplugged. Um, First of all, let's get this ground plug, okay. Alright, looks good. Gotta have to feed the power cord through the hole here. And now you can see how these, these need to be disconnected from here. And this one needs to be connected from here. So, let's do just that, without breaking anything. That's one. This should pull out, which they do. There we go, one back plate removed. Um, now we have a few more things to do. Like I said, we have to remove the nuts from the BNC connectors in the front. Uh, we also have to remove the screws that are holding this, um, this board. Um, to the chassis from underneath and we also have to unplug all the ribbon cables from the board so we can pull it out but that's it let's do it Once again, Torx T10. Alright, things should slide out without any problem. Let's first disconnect the fan here from the board. That was easy. Uh, then we're gonna have to disconnect this. I guess we can pull on this. It's from the control panel on the front. Now, 
Well, this one as well, I guess, if we can, without getting zapped. Can we do it? Can we do? Yep. You see to pull out. Should be it. Can't see anything else. Let's see. If we forgot something. Looks like we made it. <laughs> All right. There you have it. It's beautiful. But of course, before attempting to do any kind of precision work, there's something you mustn't forget to do. No, I'm not talking about grounding yourself. Let's go. All right, welcome to my secret lair here. Let's um, power up the soldering iron. Yep, there it goes. And um, see what we can do. So, the trick to this is to Get as much of the original solder removed as possible, then add uh, leaded solder, solder, then use the sucker. Mm -hmm. And there we go. Boom. <sighs> One chip removed. Right, there you have it. Nice socket. Now it's time to put it all back together again. Let's try ever so gently to put the chip back in its place. There you go. Let's see if it works. I put it all together. We're gonna see what happens when I start it up. Now I, I don't expect the error to disappear right away because this is a completely empty chip we just put in. So there won't be any calibration data on it. So we're gonna have to do a calibration afterwards, but let's see what happens. See if it blows up. That wouldn't be good. Yep. Let's do a test just out of curiosity. Self test. Test all. Yeah, test all. Um. All right. Fail, fail, fail. Okay, so. Let's uh, try and do a calibration. Okay, vertical calibration. Start calibration. Ah, see? There's a little switch in the back. You gotta put it to, uh, it's uh, right protected. So you gotta flip, flip the switch. Two. Unprotected. Now it's unprotected. Continue. Start calibration. This is a BNC to BNC um, connector. Uh, it's not the HP original one because that is way too expensive. So I just bought one on Amazon for 10 bucks. Channel one. 
and the other one to the DC calibration output in the back and um, then we press continue and uh, we wait that's probably not good seems like we have a line I haven't actually finished the calibration because uh, it said there was a BNC problem problem with the BNC cable but I loaded the the default uh, default calibration uh, into the RAM which you do by pushing the utility button this is here then you do service menu uh, you choose default calibration number three you can choose between different things default calibration and start it's gonna uh, warn you that it's gonna overwrite and continue and uh, we do like that and then I did a uh, uh, self test menu test all and um, we wait and you can see that it now passes all tests so I guess our repair was successful okay see we have a line a trace but it's definitely not uh, in the middle here so we're gonna have to try that calibration thing again mm, self calibration menu vertical calibration channel one start calibration let's try this again All right, we just finished. It says past calibration, so I guess it works. Now we're gonna do the same for all the channels, but I'm curious. Um, yeah, we got a trace right in the middle. So yeah, I worked. Let's do it for all the other channels, and then I get back to you again for a wrap up. Was the last channel and um, yeah let's do another self test just for fun look at this okay self test menu test all disconnect inputs yes Perfect. So why did we do this? I mean, it's an old thing. It's from 89. Well, because it was 20 bucks and it's a nice piece of kit. It's solidly built. The spare part cost, uh, well, it cost more than this. It cost 30 bucks. Uh, maybe you can find it cheaper somewhere. And it's a four channel digitizing oscilloscope, 100 megahertz cheaper than anything new you can buy and I bet it's better quality too so that's all hope you enjoyed and if you like it please uh, subscribe or just like the video at least thanks bye